I'm not a social media manager, like at all. Like I'm not a social media manager and I'm okay with that. But I feel like even for people who aren't social media managers are where like organizing and administration is not your strong suit. Sometimes we feel intimidated by the idea of being consistent and being committed to being uh, present online um, and just creating content in a, in a predictable way <laughs> instead of just being all over the place. I, I get challenged by that because I don't feel like I'm the best person to talk about it. And what I love about the way that I get to talk about it, I'm not talking about it from a, from a space where I got to fake it. Like this is the way that makes sense to me. And this is the way that I create content in, in a way that is still following a, a rhythm, is following some sort of cadence. And I'm, I'm okay with that. So I, and I love the thing that I love about it the most is that I really do believe that it works well for people who are really getting started because at some point, you know, hopefully you do get to a place where you can hire a social media manager and you can have people who um, maintain your pages or even who can help you be build it on a, on a larger scale. But I think that for the people who I am creating this for, this is where a lot of people are at. And the way that I break it down here, I feel like it makes, it works. It makes sense. The workbook is, the workbook is for those people. I'm just going to put it that way. But I do see how this concept of having a content cadence and not necessarily, you know, a content schedule or a plan, but really having a rhythm for how you create is really going to be helpful. Um, And as I'm talking about it, I feel like it's going to definitely kind of counter the not it's not over consumption, but it is a lot of pressure being put on people to create in at a certain rate. And I see that being the thing that is going to burn a lot of people out, especially the people who are creating and this is new to them. Like people who are just getting started, there's so much information out there that's like, you got to create this way. You got to post this much. You got to make this many videos. If you're not on all these platforms, you're not doing your job right. And that's so discouraging. <laughs> that's so discouraging. And it is a, it's the perfect trap for people to end up just creating just because like, that I feel like that's really how you get into that nine to five content creator trap where you are working and creating to feed the algorithm and you're not creating because you love it, because you enjoy it. And I honestly believe that there is space for both. The creativity and the the authenticity and the humanity in, in creating content and, and just being a creative in general is, is sapped, you know, it's, it's, it's drained when you are doing it from a place where you're trying to keep up, where you're, you're doing it from a place of lack. Creativity does not thrive in lack. It thrives in abundance. When we are in a place where we don't feel like we're lacking, where we don't feel like we're missing what we need, where our, where our needs are being met, we can create fully. And I feel like that counters that whole idea of, of you're the most creative when you don't have anything. Or you're the most creative when when you come from nothing. And even that idea, that idea, I feel like is something that I hear a lot, especially when you think about like the people who end up like earning more, making more money. And they it seems like the more money they make, the less creative they are. And I don't think that that's what's happening. I don't think that's what's happening. I believe that what's happening is that they have surrendered their creativity and their authenticity for a dollar. 
I mean, lots of dollars, like not just a single dollar, but they're trading their creativity for money. And I think that's what, that's what takes it away. That is what makes it so that you are no longer this creative individual where you don't feel as authentic, where you don't feel as relevant. I think that being relevant, it just depends on who you're talking to. And you can relate to people on different levels, regardless of your income status. And so I, the, the, the reason why is because you, you're still operating in this space of, I don't have enough. So I need to create this way in order to appease the people who are going to cut the check. I need to create this way in order to appease the algorithm so that my content can be seen by the people I want to see. So I can get the views, so I can get the likes and the comments and the shares and the virality. That is, that's what people are doing. And that is where, that's why the creativity is going. And so I feel like that's even encouraging to hear because it seems like we feel like as time to be, in order to be creative, we got to be humble. (laughs) We got to be low. We got to be these starving artists. And that's not true. My creativity should be paying me. I I should be getting paid for what I do because it is amazing. It's incredible. It helps people. It solves problems. Everybody else making money off solving problems. I want to make money off solving problems too. And I believe that I can do that and still be a creative person when I am staying true to why I create. I'm staying true to the way that's most natural for me to create. I'm not switching it up because I noticed that this is trendier. This this is this works better. This gets me more views. If it's if it takes me away, if it takes me out of alignment, if it takes me outside of the way that is the most authentic for me to be present, to show up, then I'm not doing it then I'm not doing it. And I believe that I can still be open to change. I can be open to things being different without compromising who I am. Until next time, y'all.